I'm Martin Harrer, I'm professor at Imperial College in London, just more or less next door. My research area is generally probability theory, so it's kind of the mathematics of, sort of random events. The kind of problems that I'm going to talk about this afternoon, it's about studying mathematical models for situations that evolve randomly in time, but also depend on space. You know, in mathematics, there are various sorts of infinities that show up, and mathematicians are, you know, notoriously well known for trying to deal with infinity. Uh, the sort of infinity that I want to talk about today, even though I will talk about how it shows up in the context of probability theory, which is maybe somewhat related to uh, some of your research. Originally, it really came up in the context of uh, quantum field theory. What first got me into that was a project with uh, one of my colleagues at Warwick at the time, uh, Andrew Stewart. We wanted to come up with you know, some algorithm that's supposed to sample from you know, some distribution on a space of paths. So what we did then was to actually write down one of these stochastic partial differential equations. And there we realized that it had that property that somehow if you, you write down the equation, it's it was sort of clear what was the equation we had to write down. You know, you could stick it in a computer, no problem at all. From the analysis point of view, somehow the equation was kind of nonsensical. And, you know, and we found that kind of weird. So there was clearly something to be understood. That was kind of the starting point in a way. And essentially what you do is, you know, if you sort of remember the theory of, you know, just Taylor expansions from your undergraduate days where smooth functions, you kind of replace it as a, you know, but there's a constant term, then there's a slope, then maybe you can replace it, approximate it by a parabola and so on. You get better and better approximation and that works very well for smooth functions. The idea is you try to do something similar for very irregular functions. So you try to sort of build a theory which is a little bit like Taylor expansions, but it works for things that are sort of very irregular and random somehow instead of very nice and smooth and deterministic. I think the first time that somehow I was like, wow, I mean, this is amazing, is somehow complex analysis. And so when you sort of discover complex analysis in undergrad, usually most people have some sort of visceral uh, reaction to it. You do spend some time, of course, you know, like scribbling on a piece of paper and doing sort of calculations. And sometimes calculations do lead to sort of conceptual insights. But sometimes also you don't necessarily need somehow, you know, the piece of paper and the calculation and then you could have an idea anyway. You can't sort of conjure an idea. If an idea comes, it comes. It might be because you're thinking about something just before falling asleep or it might be that you're, you know, walking somewhere. In my case specifically, I also have quite a bit of knowledge of computing and programming, so I would probably end up being a software engineer. <laughs> But I had that choice somehow as an undergrad and I, you know, prefer to be a mathematician and, you know, to keep on tinkering with computers on the side. <laughs> but if I had to change career, I would probably end up being a software engineer. <laughs> and that's natural because you can't predict the future. Well, maybe you guys can. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you're not supposed to be able to. 